Jason Everman was kicked out of Nirvana and Soundgarden right before each band made it big. Man! But that's how he found himself in the final phase of Army Special Forces training when the Twin Towers fell. Let's start where Everman did, Nirvana. As the second guitarist for the Bleach album tour in 1989, Everman was the band's fourth member. Nirvana owes a lot to Everman including $606.17, which is how much it cost to record the album. Everman, the only bandmate who had a job, fronted the bill. But the tour would take a negative turn and he would part ways immediately after without reimbursement. Kurt Cobain allegedly boasted about not paying Everman back for Bleach, claiming it was payment for mental damage. The record would eventually sell 2.1 million copies. Ouch! I mean, but what could have been a bad break for Everman was actually fortuitous. A band Everman loved, Soundgarden, needed a new bass player, and 22-year-old Everman landed the gig. But after a year of touring, Everman found himself being let go once again. This time, it hurt. Soundgarden went double platinum, and Everman went Fetal. I mean, looking back at what went wrong with both bands, it's clear, I mean, at least from a distance, that Everman was suffering from some mental health challenges. I mean, it was reported that a cloud would come over him and that he had trouble finding the fun. Something just wasn't working for him. He started to realize he wanted to do something bigger, something in his words, impossible. So he joined the army. I mean, his stepfather was a Navy veteran and both grandfathers were ex-military. Everman didn't just want to serve. He wanted to become a ranger, like a boss. At age 26, Everman already stood out a bit in basic training at Fort Benning, but a month into it, Kurt Cobain committed suicide. And one of the photographs that made its rounds through newspapers featured Everman. The drill sergeants jumped on the opportunity to give their rock star hell. Everman wasn't phased a bit. He kicked ass and became an army ranger, deploying on covert operations in Latin America and the war on drugs. But he still felt like he had more work to do. So he decided to pursue special forces training. He was in the final phase on September 11, 2001. Watching the news with his brothers in arms, he knew he'd be going to war. Finally, Everman felt like he was in the right place at the right time. He'd follow in the footsteps of the Green Berets who avenged 9-11 on horseback. He would go on to serve in multiple AORs, including Afghanistan and Iraq. Of course, the details of his work are classified, but maybe that's part of what made it so appealing after the publicity of rock. After his service, Everman went to Columbia University with a letter of recommendation from General Stanley McChrystal, no less. Everman continued his path towards academia, becoming a 2015 Pat Tillman Scholar for his graduate degree at Norwich University. He's not the only warrior with an artistic side, you know? Tell us some of your favorites in the comments below. Like me. You know, maybe we'll do a video about them next. Or a video about me. We could write that, right? You'd be interested. Thanks.